Marvellous. Pip Pip, Twiddly Dee, Tally Ho, Jewel Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts. And uh, today, no, I thought my nose might be bleeding because I've come south of the river again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I am indeed south of the river. We're in Brixton. And Brixton comes from Brixistan or Brixistan or something like that. It's like a, a stone, boundary stone. It was up at the top of Brixton Hill there, uh, which was a meeting point for the hundred local parishes. But towards 1816, they started building these houses down these main roads. Actually, the main roads are old Roman roads. This Brixton Road, I think you eventually you come to Croydon and then you end up in Brighton. OK, so to joining us for today's reckless, ribald, rollicking romp, special guest for today, yes, Matt, who played keyboards in Bros, wrote the theme tune to the 90s version of Top of the Pops. Co-wrote. Co-wrote yeah. and produced Don't Bogart That Joint for the film Mr Nice, which also featured Little Lost Lou on backing vocals. Now, this is a very beautiful uh, 1911 uh, listed building. The Ritz, who used to be called the uh, Electric Pavilion. And and this is actually one of the first purpose-built cinemas in the UK. They actually have a, a, an organ in there for accompanying the silent movies. Originally, there was a theatre here. This is the foundation stone of, of the theatre which was here, which got hit by the Luftwaffe. Oh, I see. Yeah, Frank Matcham, he was a famous architect. This Frank Matcham architect. He designed loads of these big Victorian theatres yes. around London. But yeah, that's the only bit that survived. And, uh, and the Ritzy cinema just took over the extra bit of ground. I rather like having you in it, not saying it. He's just standing there, like looking very <laughs> suspicious, like he's my bodyguard or something. He will say something. Wait, you will say something. I will say something. Oh, excellent. Henry Tate, who was famous for having introduced uh, sugar cubes to Britain, famous for donating his art collection to the Tate Gallery, which is uh, why we have Tate Modern and Tate Britain. He opened up this library here. Um, but in 1806, there was, a, there was a law that said you weren't allowed any erections between uh, within 150 feet <laughs> down boy <laughs> of the London Croydon Turnpike, which is that road down. I think it's uh, I think it's Brixton Road. Uh, I guess if you walk from there to there, it's probably about 150 feet. Do you know what the difference is between that one there with the pipe coming out of his mouth? Or there's a lion there you see with things with a big moustache. The gargoyle is the one that has water coming out of his mouth. Okay, right. Because I think they're called grotesques. Oh, okay. and they're only gargoyles if they've got water coming out of them. So that one there is a gargoyle, I would say. I think it's from the French or something. The throats in French, which is where we get the word gargle from, of course. My name is Natalie, but I go by natural right because I've had natural hair since I was eight. So Another poet. Another poet. Another what is it with Brixton and poets? But there's a lot to express. There's a lot to talk about. Brixton is a place where culture and history and politics collide. In the 1940s and 50s, the Windrush breeze blew my grandparents' generation here. Their stories are memorialised in the Black History Archives right here in Windrush Square. The Windrush was when like, my grandparents' generation came over. The first boat was the Windrush. In think, Jamaica? Yes. To rebuild Britain, I to suppose, Britain, after yeah. the war. 1948, so that's the year that the Rindrush came over. They also served in the war as well, which they not really don't get recognition for that as well. If you look over here, yeah. you've got the monument to the service women and men that died. And just next door is the Black Cultural Archives, which opened in 1981, and it's the only repository of black culture and history in the UK. Fantastic, there's so much knowledge and information in there. Uh, the Poetry Night is Wednesday, it's Poetic Unity. It's a really, really powerful night. Um, I've performed here a couple of times. I haven't been here for a while though. Talking about love. And I'm dancing around when I'm with the crowd in the streets of Brixton. Hi, Julian. Hello. Hi. Excellent. Okay. Manly handshake. Manly hand <laughs> this is Diana. And we're actually allowed to film in here. Super, thanks so much. <laughs> there are five markets, obviously, in Brixton. Uh, both markets um, are Grade 2 listed. Buildings are normally listed because of their architectural beauty. Um, Brixton Market was actually listed for its cultural relevance. So the diversity that you see in regards to the people, the retail mix, the type of food that we have here has been retained and restored in the cultural listing. Yes, this is one of our, we call them traditional traders. This is a very suspicious looking uh, vegetable here. Yam. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. I'm very, I'm very juvenile. <laughs> 
<laughs> huge, suspicious yell. Cola nut bisi. This is, prevents fatigue, tonic for the heart, stomach upsets, diarrhea, poisoning. Dog blood? What's that? They actually, dog blood? Is what's that? that? Control, inflammation, cancer, <coughs> fever, jaundice, stomach ache. Oh, this is dog blood. Look at that. Just what it's called, yeah. <laughs> Jack in the bush, cold fever and flu, pimento leaves, pepper elder, periwinkle, eucalypts. I feel like I'm in Harry Potter. Yeah, because this is called Irish moss, and bizarrely, somebody's just messaged me on Facebook and said, you've got to try some Irish moss for your skin problem. Boiler for like six, seven minutes. What's going to happen? This is going to fuck the froth. Oh, it's okay. going to froth all the boiling water. Do you want to have it as a drink or what yeah, do you want to do? Yeah, that'll do, yeah. And, but the thing is, pour that out, but what happens is if you leave it for like 10 or 15 minutes, this will turn into a gel. Oh, right, OK. And so that's then I can put it on my face, can yeah, I? Of yeah, of course. Oh, that's what I'll do, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If I you just... can handle the... Some people can't handle the smell. I, so I, I can handle it. the smell, I don't mind it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they'll be West African, a mixture of Ghanaian and Nigerian, and the cloth is called kente. Talking about love. And I'm dead. Thanks so much. By the way, and, and remind me again how you hurt your leg? It was a limbo competition. <laughs> straightforward, straightforward limbo competition. So in 1986, Kevin Atherton sculpted these uh, three figures. I think there's only two at the moment because there's one of them is being renovated, but they were the first uh, sculptures of black British people anywhere in the UK in a public place. The models were just local people waiting for trains and stuff. I pray the Lord It's mad. I think it's brilliant. Really. I mean, it is lovely, though, isn't it? Look what they've done. Isn't it so clever? It always reminds me of um, Blade Runner. Do you know what I mean? Those sort of scenes where it's all a bit indoor and outdoor at the same time. And it's quick to get here. You don't have to be scared of South London. South London isn't a dirty word, is it? Wow. Really? Ha okay. What have you got here? I think they've got one of the biggest stages in Europe, the Brixton Academy. You've probably been to see a band there, but um, it opened in 1929-ish. There's a theatre and a cinema. Police, dire straits, everyone basically. They, they even recorded the video for Wake Me Up Before You Go Go in there. Yeah, craft work. I've seen craft work there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I've even played on the stage myself. Have you? Oh, in oh, hat. I, 1989, I think oh, it was. Oh. Yes, yeah, a decade of style, they called it. <laughs> Chuck a Khan, smiley culture. A decade of style. What well, you mean more? A decade of style. A decade what? of style. <laughs> a decade of style. Yeah. You look quite scar and like in that outfit. Can you do the dance? I am free. Living in the bright aromas of the street. That this bin at number 40 Stansfield Road is very <laughs> important. <laughs> Because Bo that Bowie bin. <laughs> that belongs to the people who live in the house where David Bowie was born. Bow your head, you lowly dog. Bowie was born in this very house. And outside he's got the Bowie mobile yeah, that's in, in really dark black. Look at that black. Amazing colour. The cool thing about getting from David Bowie's house to the mural yeah. is in order to get there, First of all, you have to turn to the left, and then <laughs> there you got to turn to the right. Fashion. Fashion. We are the Goon Squad and the coming. Still don't know what I was waiting for. And my time's running wild, a million dead in streets and singles out next week. It's rumoured that the, the Major Tom, who was the sort of ground control to Major Tom, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, uh, was in fact uh, Major Tom, was uh, what John Tom? Major's father. Yeah, Tom Because Major. that was his uh, professional name, his entertainer. He was in the circus or something, wasn't well, he? John Major was from Brixton. He was brought up in Brixton. Correct. And uh, his dad was a, a music hall entertainer. And David Bowie apparently was walking past a poster yeah. one day. And, and when he saw Tom Major's name, that gave him the idea for Major Tom. And John Major was famously the first person that ran away from the circus to become an accountant. <laughs> I met David himself, by the way when he opened up the Brixton Community Centre, he said to me, tell me something, he said, do you dress like this all the time? 
and you walk around. I said, yeah, well, I can. He said, well, how come I can't go to Brixton and walk around? I get mobbed. <laughs> I said, yeah, but David, there's one big difference. I'm not you. I heard the news he's died. I thought, no, I'm dreaming. I just went down there to pay my respects, you know? And I thought, next time I come down here, I'm going to bring a, a boom box. And I ended up doing two years there every day playing Bowie's music. Every yeah. day? You do this <laughs> oh, every yeah, day? Yeah. By the 1920s, Brixton had become one of the most popular and fashionable places to come and do your shopping. And there was a fella called James Smith who won a load of money on horses at Newmarket and he invested it rather wisely by opening up Bon Marche, which is the first department store in the whole of the UK. He then used these buildings here, I think it was these ones here, for accommodation for the employees at Bon Marche. And uh, there's actually a tunnel that goes underneath the ground and up to, up to the accommodation there. Morley's here, this is another one of those wonderful old shops that was here in the late 19th century. Unlike Bon Marche, this one's still trading. So we're just off to go and meet a poet called Michael Gross. He's a poet and community activist. I love Brixton. All the different foods it has to offer. I love the different faces of my sisters and my brothers. I love Brixton. This was already quite a busy shopping district, quite a famous shopping district uh, around the end of the 19th century. But in 1888, Electric Avenue over there got its name because it was the first market street to be fully lit by electricity. And it was very beautiful. It had these wonderful Victorian canopies. I think the Nazis hit a bunch of them and uh, eventually they all decayed. They should bring them back. Yeah, we are now going to rock down to Electric Avenue. And uh, I, after that, you're going to take it higher, do yeah, We will uh, definitely uh, take well, it higher. Uh, it's not actually new, right? So, um, Obviously, yeah. I wanted to use Rock Down to Electric Avenue by Eddie Grant, but I couldn't, or well, I'd get a copyright strike. So instead, you can hear Little Lost Lou's homage to Electric Avenue, all about how it was the first market street to be lit up by electricity. And it used to have, like in Victorian times, it had these beautiful iron sort of canopies yeah, hanging save, over. They and... tried to save them, you know. They, 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 one of the part of regeneration was to bring back the canopy and give it the old style feel. Yeah. But that just went out the window. We don't know what's going to happen. So they've done the first phase, which is what you might call pedestrianising the whole place that we can walk through. Because it used to be roads. Yeah. You could drive through here, but now they've stopped with that. So it's much cleaner, much easier. <laughs> When I think of the 80s, for me, I have an image of Arthur Scargill, Margaret Thatcher, the miners' strikes, but also we had these massive Brixton riots in 1981. So what was the, what was the last straw that actually sparked it off, that really well, kicked it off? There, there was two straws. Um, there was a fight that happened in Brixton in the 81, and instead of the police allowing it to go to the doctors and everything, they took him into custody. Getting him back out of that, that caused the, the fight, and then it just escalated. It was when my mum got shot. That touched a deeper core within the community. That's someone's mum. So word so, spread pretty fast, I guess. Very fast. By the time that word spread, there was a gathering at some of my mum's house. And I think someone, I know the person who threw the first bottle, threw the first bottle at the window. This is when, yo. More than just racism, but there was, there was all sorts of isms going on, because you had the Irish problem as well, right? Yeah, because they had signs saying, no blacks, no, no dogs. Irish, no dogs. No dogs. And that's me designed a poem for him. It goes, let the Guinness flow, my friends, the black and white together, for the history of our path will be entwined forever, from the Irish seas to the Celtic shores, to distant roots of Mother Africa is the inspiration for our source, for we tell the same story. Well, I'm going to get a saltfish patty and cocoa bread. Lovely jubbly. What is this? You've got um, a lamb patty in cocoa bread. Okay. So it's like hard dough bread, like just making bread. We should have been Blue Peter presenters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm. <laughs> You're enjoying my lovely patty. Do you, is this yours? Mm. You made this? Yeah. Good job. You like it? Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's a bit hot, actually. Yeah. One of the places that got hit in the, in the riots in the 90s was the Atlantic Bar, which was this one here. It's now the Dog Star. Is it, what was it called back then, the Atlantic? It was called the Atlantic, yeah. Uh, what, what was it like in there? No, but you couldn't go down there unless you knew someone in there. 
and if the police come, it was confrontational. Oh, there, you no, can go there. You can go like that. No, no. <laughs> I can't go many places We'd like this. Like, who's that cause us? Who's that police officer? <laughs> you, you can talk to us as much as you want. No, man, that's police, brother. That's police. And he's one of the residents of them now, the original man them then, that came to Brixton. What? Just do a quick bit of translation there, because I believe Michael <laughs> just used the word mandem. <laughs> right? Right, me and you. The mandem. The man them. Those men. Those men. Oh, they're men. The, yeah, that's they're what it means. Oh, man them. Oh, but we just reversed it. This is Sodic House. Or they, they call it the barrier block. It was it's, it's from the 1970s. One of those um brutalist, it's called brutalist architecture. Like like the Trellick Tower. You know Trellick Tower is a gold finger guy who, who did designed these things. It's kind of typical 70s type uh building and it was actually originally designed to go alongside a, a, a six-lane motorway they had developed this idea to have this six-lane motorway cutting all the way through Brixton it was a Polish architect I've forgotten her name because the motorway was going to be coming past it so the, the way around that was to have very very small windows and that's why it ended up looking like a prison lots of people think that's Brixton prison and it might as well for, for good reason you know do you know what I mean probably do feel like you're you, sorry can I just say that the Jules Knights does not condone necessarily the views of people who appear in our films. I actually quite like it. I think the windows are cute. Look at that. <laughs> praise the Lord above, I'm electrified by lust. Light me up, light me up, my friend. 406, doesn't look like my, this fascinating shop front is actually 406 Cold Harbour Lane. It's actually a really important location in, in, in the Brixton community. This, this used to be... This used to be Black Dread Records. He, he was like the kingpin guy round here for the reggae stuff, you know, like they all used to go there to buy like their imports from Jamaica and what like, you know. Black Dread sound system was in there as well. Yeah. He produces the music, he puts on the shows, he brings over the artists. Black and Red was a real pillar of the community. And young people would come and hang out here and he'd give them advice on how to stay out of gangs and not get into drugs and stuff. After, after his son died, he became much more involved in politics and uh, uh, through that he began to you know, get more involved with the community and he set up the Brixton Splash Festival, music festival. Brixton Splash started as a few hundred people outside his shop here with a sound system. Then it grew into being the major yearly street carnival that it is today. It's the first Sunday of every August. Unfortunately, the shop shut in 2013 when financial irregularities came into play and he uh, had to go elsewhere to stay for a bit. Before he went to prison, in order to announce to all his customers that he had closed the shop, he just got a bit of uh, A4 paper um, and stuck it to, the, to, to these shutters here and it said, oops. Let's walk down the again. In 1822, Thomas Bailey was desirous of establishing an asylum for pious, aged women. And in fact, you had to prove that you really did believe in God in order to stay here. And if you were aged between 57 and 67, you counted as an aged person. They could only house 12 uh, aged, pious women here, but I believe it still has people in there yeah, today. That's a town hall over there. And uh, now those sculptures are science, art, literature and justice. Someone took a long time to carve those in there. So it's, it's quite nice uh, to know what they actually represent. This is St Matthew's Church. They call them the Waterloo Churches. To commemorate Waterloo, to lift the spirits and celebrate, they decided let's build a load of churches. Because all these expanding towns and stuff, like Brixton was pretty new back then and they needed new, more churches. But these days, I don't, I think it's... Torture it's, garden. It's torture, yeah, torture garden. I thought so. Yeah, like fetish nightclub. Oh, it's, just, it's like whips, chains, yeah, leather, all that sort yeah, yeah, of stuff. Yeah. And it's quite remarkable that it went on in a church. Perfectly normal, if you ask me. And it wasn't unheard of to see a zebra-drawn carriage down in Brixton either. I think it turned out that it belonged to a musical artist called Gustav Greys or something he lived around the area because this whole area used to be occupied by actors. Anyway, he was one of them and I think the zebra was actually part of his stage act or something but he'd often be seen riding it around anyway. I also believe Lord Rothschild had one, whoever he was. Uh, showed it. Oh, a fan! Yeah, a fan! Yeah, yeah. We're from Canada. I'm oh, you're studying Canada. in the UK right Oh, now. great. Oh, okay, Excellent. And now you're in a Jules Guide yeah. about Brixton. Dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much.
This is Ephra Road, and underneath there is the River Ephra, which now forms part of Joseph Bazalgette's um, Victorian sewer system, which actually rises in Crystal Palace and flows all the way down Brookston Water Lane and uh, out into the River Thames over at Vauxhall. Now, what's a story in Victorian times about uh, a coffin that was seen floating down the river and into the River Thames? Um, when they checked the, the bloke's name on the coffin, they saw that it had come from West Norwood Cemetery. And the cemetery staff were completely freaked out because the tomb had been completely undisturbed. They were wondering how on earth this coffin had ended up floating down the river. Uh, but what had happened was uh, that the ground had subsided beneath West Norwood Cemetery and causing the coffin to fall into the river beneath the Ephra. So it floated off down the river Ephra and into the River Thames. And legend also has it that Queen Elizabeth I was also seen frequently sailing down the River Ephra on her way to go and visit Sir Walter Raleigh, who actually had a house here on Brixton Hill, um, just at the end of Blenheim Gardens. Oh, Sir Walter, really. This is Blenheim Gardens. I, I do like this old post office here. Look at this nice old original. This is still a post office it's since 1891 when they built it. And uh, I do love a post box. All around Brixton, I've seen Elizabeth. I've uh -huh. seen George, which is, this will be George yes. V, I think. Um, George VI was Second World War, wasn't yes. he? I've seen Victoria ones, Elizabeth yeah, ones, I've and the Edward VII, yeah. all around this right. neighborhood. Have you seen a man who knew yeah. too much, yeah. like yeah. Alfred Hitchcock? Yeah. You know the church at the end of that? He has to go to the um, Ambrose Chapel. That's right, yeah. Uh, Jimmy Stewart, yeah. You know they're kind of prisoner in, inside a church at the end? Yeah. That was filmed just, just there. In, amongst here, they knocked all those buildings down. The church still remains, yes. but yeah. the church yeah. hall where they filmed it, everything else has gone. Now it's all changed. But look at this terrific windmill. Superb. A real functioning windmill. This was built in 1816. That's a proper, it's actually the Ashby family who, who owned it would have just stood in a field back in those days and had proper sails there and it was run by the actual wind um, and it produced flour for the local community and they sold it and what have you. But uh, sadly, when they uh, developed the area, it became less windy and so they couldn't operate it. And so they installed a generator, which worked properly until about 1934, supplying flour to hotels and what have you. Funnily enough, actually, behind there was the uh, Brixton House of Correction uh, built in 1820, which was the first prison to introduce the treadmill. And so they could produce flour. And that was also sold. Yeah, they could actually make money out of it. So it's quite interesting that they've got Brixton Prison right next to the windmill that used to make flour. I don't typically tread in dog poo. You know, I'm quite an observant person. But the last three times I've trod in dog poo have been while I'm out filming you. <laughs> Oh, my bloody fault. Are you <laughs> summoning them or something? Let's walk down the avenue again. I pray the Lord above. I'm electrified by love. Light me up, light me up, my friend. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 Thanks, sir. Cheers. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And uh, if you're interested, uh, you can check over uh, my website, julesguys.com, where you can find out more about me and uh, do a whole load of other things. Uh, but uh, above all, have a beautiful day. <laughs>